First, I would love to say that Jonathan or Jonathan, since I'm also from Montreal, I really admire your work and the more I listen to what you have to say, the more my appreciation for you grows. Having said this, however, I feel obliged to react to some of your comments on the Ruslan's channel. Not because I believe necessarily you said something inaccurate, but because I believe some of the listeners might have misunderstood what she meant to say. And it does paint the Coptic Church in a negative light. For example, you mentioned that some denominations emphasize too much the union. I honestly don't know if you're referring to the heresy of Eutyches, which in that case, it makes absolute sense, and I do agree with you. However, if you are referring to the Coptic Church or the Orientals in general, then I must say that more background would be needed to shed some light. You also seem to believe that the Eastern Orthodox have an additional fullness to the Oriental Orthodox. I'm not sure I would agree with the statement. I respect personally the Eastern Orthodox a lot, but I don't see how they would have an additional fullness than the Orientals. So going back to the unity of Christ, we are indeed Miaphysites, not Monophysites, which is a heresy, and we still follow the Christological formula of St. Cyril of Alexandria, which simply speaking, the entire Christendom agreed to in the Council of Ephesus in 431. We essentially believe that Christ is fully God and fully man at the same time, united in one hypostasis or in one person. I can understand from your perspective why you would think that we might be too committed to that one nature out of two, but sometimes you have to put yourself in the other person's shoes. How would you think the Copts would feel when they are attending a council where there's a clear shifting from the already agreed to Cyrillian formula? Also, where Theodoret of Cyrus and Ibas of Edessa, who were loyal to Nestorius, are being readmitted in the church and reinstituted as bishops, and where the tomb of Leo was presented as foundational to the council, and it did include some vague statements, which had Nestorian implications like the one now on the screen, which deals with the human nature of Christ as if it is a person, which echoes Nestorianism. All of this and more would naturally lead the Copts to hold on dearly to the Meiaphysite Christology of St. Cyril. It is clear that many things went wrong during this council, but I think it is wise to look forward rather than backwards and pray for unity between the two Orthodox groups. For more information on the Christological stance of St. Cyril, I would invite you to watch the video which link is in the description box. Another point you mentioned in the interview is the Eastern Orthodox position of Christ's will. I do want to emphasize that the Orientals do not believe that Christ has one will in the sense that the human will ceased to exist, quite the opposite. As St. Gregory the Theologian said, that which is not assumed is not healed. St. Cyril speaks clearly about this, and so do the rest of the Oriental Fathers. But St. Severus says this. So he says, But because the Emmanuel is by nature also God and goodness itself, Although he has become a child according to the economy, he did not await the time of the distinction between good and evil. On the contrary, from the time of swaddling clothes, before he came to an age of distinguishing between good and evil, on the one side he spurned evil and did not listen to it, and on the other he chose good. So St. Severus here is essentially saying, that God the Logos in his divinity did not need to wait until the human brain developed for him to start distinguishing between good and evil, and therefore he spurned evil at all times. However, on the human side, Christ chose to do what is good. So he's speaking about here, contrasting in a sense, the divine will and the human will, right? But again, he always comes back to the idea that both of them, both human and divine wills, were the same essentially afterwards, and so does St. Cyril and the remainder of the fathers. And so he continues, These words he spurned, and he did not listen, and on the other he chose, show us, the Logos of God has united to himself, not only to the flesh, but also to the soul which is endowed with will and understanding. So here it's clear the human soul has a will. 
in order to allow our souls, which are inclined towards evil, to lean towards choosing good and turning away from evil. So he's speaking here about the healing of the human will or the rectification, if you will. For God, as God does not need to choose good, but because for our sakes he assumed flesh and spiritual soul, he took for us this redress. And this convergence of the wills is essentially what is being said in the definition of faith in the Eastern Orthodox's Sixth Council, here highlighted in bold, for it says, For it was right that the flesh should be moved, but subject to the divine will, according to the most wise Athanasius, who is obviously one of the patriarchs of the Coptic Church. So essentially, both groups are saying very, very similar things. If ever you are watching this, Jonathan, we would love to meet to discuss some other common subjects of interest. I personally would love to chat with you regarding St. Ephraim's The Syrian View of the Garden of Eden. I am deeply in love with this subject and I hope to see you soon.